All right, I thought I would show you quickly um, a couple of the different things that you can utilize within Time Trade to make scheduling appointments a lot easier um, than going back and forth via email because a lot of times, especially when we're virtual assistants, we work with people in multiple time zones and when a prospective client contacts us, um, it's easy for them not to mention what time zone they're in and it's also easy for us to forget to ask them. So by utilizing time trade, one, it cuts down on the emails that go back and forth because you can just provide a link to someone and it also gives someone the ability to look at the open appointments you have based on the time zone that they're in. So for example, I'm logged in right now to my time trade account and I'm on the professional edition, which is the cheapest of the paid and I want to say it's less than $20 a year. It's super inexpensive. And they do have some limited um, features with their free account, but I've been on the paid for so long, I don't really remember what those free um, versions are. You might be limited in the free version to how many appointments you get per month or something of that nature. But definitely worth checking out um, because if you're a light user, maybe the free version will have exactly what you need without the need to upgrade to the $20 a year. But even $20 a year, so incredibly cheap. Okay, so real quick, you'll see here from my home page that I have defined three different appointment time slots. I typically try with consultations to get them to only be 30 minutes because that's essentially free time I'm giving away and so I don't want to get into a situation where I have tons and tons of you know brain cells transferring over to the other person knowing that there's a possibility that they're going to opt not to work with me for whatever reason um, and then I also do coaching with other virtual assistants and those I have set up for 90 minutes is what I actually have that one set up for and I don't really use the 60 minute one too often but I do have it there because there have been occasions that it's useful for me to have a 60 minute time block available for someone. So once you've defined all these different activities um, I believe you can create a lot more if you want what you can do is you can determine here under appointment availability. So for example, you'll see here on the screen right now it's saying availability starts 1231 of 2013. And I allow people to book in four weeks into the future. And if there's 13 times still available for the two weeks starting on 1231 of 13. So if I wanted to edit those various options, you just click the edit link and it's super easy. So basically what you can do is you can choose the day and times you're available. Mondays and Thursdays typically are really busy days for me and so I prefer to try to schedule any phone calls I have on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Fridays would be okay too. Um, so for example if I wanted to go ahead and put Friday on the calendar I can go ahead and literally just click wherever you want it to show and then look at that just like magically shows up there and then I could also let's say I wanted to go ahead and choose that one too so then once you have these times in here you see this option that says options and so you can tell this do you want this to recur every Friday do you want it to only be available for a certain amount of time maybe you only want it available until the end of March or something so just you know go ahead and do that I'm gonna go ahead and hit save and so now you see the word recur shows up above there so that indicates that it's recurring every single Friday in this case at 11:30 a.m. Eastern let's say I've changed my mind I don't really want this one here anymore so I could just go ahead and hit delete and let's say for example I want to delete I do actually want to delete the 3 p.m.s because well, this 3 p.m. I'll delete. That's when I pick my son up from school this year. So I'm going to click Options. I'm going to say Delete this window. And now it's going to ask me, do you want to delete it just on this Wednesday or do you want to delete it every Wednesday? So I'm going to go ahead and click Every Wednesday because I want it to delete forevermore. And then just go ahead and click Finish. Now if we were to come out here and look, oh, yes, okay. If we are going to 
grab this link. So this is the link, for example, that you'd have on your website, or maybe you would give it to someone after they email you. So it makes it super easy. So let's look at this as though we were going to schedule an appointment. All right, so up here in the upper right hand corner, we see that this is in time zone Eastern. And Wednesday, January 1st, we have 11.30, 1 and 2 p.m. Eastern available. Now, if you were trying to book an appointment for someone in a different time zone, and if you're like me and often miscalculate the difference, for example, between Pacific Standard and Eastern Standard, you can just switch this little calendar up here to whatever time zone you'd like to look at. So let's switch this to Pacific. So take a moment and it rethinks and then look at that. It shows everything now in Pacific time, which is really, really handy. All right, so now we see how to do that. And so let's say January 1st, I really don't want to schedule any appointments on New Year's Day. So how can we easily go ahead and have those appointments not show without coming into time trade and going through and individually clicking and deleting each of those. So the easiest way to do that is under admin, under my account, we have this connect your calendar option. So if you use Outlook or Google Calendar, you can connect your time trade to go to your Google Calendar. And so there you see it's syncing to my Google Calendar there. And then what happens? So let's and I also tell Google tell Time Trade rather get busy time from your Google Calendar. So if we come out to my Google Calendar, let's see here. Let's go to my calendar and I'm going to tell my calendar I could put one appointment in my calendar to get rid of three appointments showing on January 1st in my time trade account. So my Google Calendar is scary <laughs> because things keep double coming through. So I'm going to go ahead on January 1st, all day event. I'm going to put in here admin hold. And I'm going to tell this January 1st. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to make sure that this show me as list as busy. Because by default, Google Calendar assumes that if you have an all-day event that you're actually available. And let's say you're flying or it's first of the year, you're actually really busy because you want Google Calendar to speak with your time trade account and say, hey, I'm not actually available at all. Let's go ahead and click Save. So now we see admin hold showing up here on January 1st. If we refresh the time trade link that we were looking at before, See how there's no appointments now showing on January 1st? Because Time Trade went out, spoke to Google Calendar, saw that I have an all day busy appointment that I put on January 1st, and therefore it says, oh, okay, she's not available at all. And so that enabled me to do one thing versus deleting out three things. And actually, in reality, it would have been deleting out multiple, it would have been actually more than three things because remember I have activities set up, three different activities. And so actually in reality there would have been a number of 30 minute phone calls I would have had to delete from January 1st. And then the same thing with 60 and 90 minutes. So this has automatically updated my availability for all three activities shown here just by putting in that one appointment on the Google Calendar. And with that, I think that we're pretty set up. Again, you can take this link and notice here, for example, six J6S7J, that's the link that's showing for the 30 minute call. And each call has an entirely different URL. See so this one's VJ9B6 and this one is M9VPL. So each activity that you create has a separate activity link and just make sure that you use the appropriate one through that. And I don't use this create an email invitation option, but you could use it. Um, I just tend to give people the link and allow them to look at my calendar and select something that works for them. But you could also use this you know, option as well. So hopefully that helps you see how nice 
um, time trade can be for scheduling appointments and certainly making it more efficient and effective than the email back and forth that can happen a lot of times.